On this edition of Native Report, we meet Lauren Anthony. He's been in the spotlight as a Navajo actor for years. From Meet the Millers to Longmire to The Lone Ranger, his resume is stacked. In that story, he shares his experience walking off the Ridiculous Six movie set after not seeing eye to eye on how Indian country was being depicted in the script. We then meet Defy, also of the Southwest Navajo Nation. This rapper speaks to indigenous life while smashing stereotypes in the lyrics of his song. Defy is active in drawing awareness to Native issues and helping raise funds for communities through benefit concerts. And we meet Leander Begay of Arizona's Dead Pond Skateboards as he shares his journey from painting his first skateboard to mass producing them. How these Native entertainers and entrepreneurs are making their mark in Indian country and beyond on this edition of Native Report. Production funding for Native Report is provided in part by the Blandin Foundation. Welcome to Native Report and thanks for tuning in. I'm Rita Aspinwall. Thanks Rita, I'm Ernie Stevens. Lauren Anthony is in the spotlight as an accomplished Navajo actor with acting roles in major films like Meet the Millers, Longmire, The Lone Ranger, to name a few. He is one of the actors who walked off the set of Adam Sandler's Ridiculous Six, garnering worldwide attention. He says a producer told him he would never work in Hollywood again because of it. That's not the case. Akwazesne Mohawk producer Vincent Schilling talks to Lauren about his experiences as a high-profile native actor. It was all a wish, a dream, an idea that I wanted to get into the film industry and also work for my community, also helping youth and helping elders. It all became something that I thought was um, impossible at one point because of my selfish ways coming from an attic background, coming from you know being pressed down from society, being pressed down from the people in my family, people in my community, because a lot of the stuff that is going on now is totally impossible as a kid, you know, years back. Hi, I'm Lauren Anthony. I'm based out of Galt, New Mexico, right on the borderline of the Navajo Nation. In 2015, Lauren Anthony was one of several Native actors who walked off the set of Adam Sandler's movie, The Ridiculous Six. After racially insensitive lines in the script and Native stereotypes on the set incited him to leave. Anthony, who was told he would never work in the industry again, proved everyone wrong. Five years ago, I walked off the film Ridiculous Six. It was a choice that I made personally. To make that choice of walking off, there was some consequences to it. There was some threats that had happened. One of them were, you know, producers, people in the industry telling me that myself, I will never work in Hollywood ever again because of that incident. Of course, nobody wants people walking off from a job, but if a job pertains to having a disrespect to people, your culture, your native women, and all the things that you stand for, then, you know, I, I would rather be that person who never sold out their people and just take that higher road of like, okay, well, if I don't ever work in the film industry again, at least I knew that I made an impact at that point, that I made the right decision, that I did follow my heart and trust my gut on what needed to be done. So that was five years ago. Now, since then, I'm, I'm 28 films in this industry now. Just getting back from Los Angeles, California, just a couple days ago, shooting my first feature film out in Hollywood as a lead actor. For me, it was uh, just true grit, believing in myself, believing in the people that believe in me as well, all my supporters, all my friends, all my family that really have stuck with me since day one. Those are the people that really matter to me that kept me grounded. As a member of the Navajo Nation, Lauren Anthony feels representation is everything. You know, being a native person myself of the Navajo Nation, it's important for this representation to happen because there are a lot of res kids out there that grew up just like me watching TV from an antenna in the middle of nowhere and just wanting to be somebody, just wanting to be seen. And so when you see somebody else that looks like you on TV or on, in movies, it's, it's a feeling that's um, beyond describable because 
We hardly and ever see any representation of Native people. We deserve those spots. We deserve to be recognized. We deserve all of the wonderful things that are out there, and I really believe that we can do it. One thing Anthony feels strongly about is reaching out and helping his own community. One of the community things that I do is called Chidge for Chidge, which stands for firewood for grandpa. Uh, we don't only help our grandpas, we help our grandmothers too here in the Navajo Nation. We try to focus on high risk elders on the Navajo Nation who have no fixed income, who have no family help resources to help them out with like getting the firewood themselves. So we go out every year to collect firewood and deliver it to families, to elders in need. When we got into doing Chish for Che for uh, 2019, and we wrapped up in March of this year, COVID happened. So right after that, we just transitioned into doing mutual aid for Navajo Nation. And providing mutual aid on Navajo Nation was providing 700 food boxes, 700 cases of water, 700 cases of cleaning supplies and sanitation items for our Navajo elders and families. Because COVID hit a lot of our families pretty hard. It, during the month of June of 2020, I lost eight friends to COVID and it was one after another. So it was um, a very personal battle for me. Life, you know, it's it's crazy how things come about. Uh, but the thing was to push forward and to push forward was also to take care of yourself physically. And because I'm a big gym rat, the gyms close in March as well. So I was also out of, you know, this, this resource of finding therapy through working out and I needed to find ways to help me get back on track. So I created uh, my backyard workouts, which entitled, you know, lifting railroad ties, chains, bars, tires, big rocks, and I was just repping them out. So check this out. Something really awesome happened during my time with the backyard workouts. Men's Health Magazine, national publication, international, worldwide on the web, hit me up and said, hey, we want to put you in our magazine. So. I didn't know how to take that. I was like, really? Because I thought it was a joke, but it became out to be a real reality when we had the full crew here shooting back at the backyard and we did our workouts and it was the most amazing experience I ever had. But I'm really happy to bring another level of representation because I'm gonna be the first native guy to be featured in a fitness magazine, uh, first Navajo to be featured in a fitness magazine. So I'm really happy and thankful for um, Men's Health Magazine for reaching out and having me a part of this. No matter what situation you're in, you can do it. You can get back into shape. You can find health in the, the resources that you have around your home, just finding two gallons of water and lifting that thing. Uh, there's ways to do it. There's, if, if you have the will, there is a way. I really appreciate you watching this segment. I'm Lauren Anthony. I send you all my strength, all my love, and may you be blessed every day of your life. Remember, don't give up. Native Indian country out there. We are strong, we are resilient, and we are awesome and beautiful. You guys have an awesome day. There's a lot of magic that happens when a baby is born, and we can talk about some of that at another time. One of the things we watch for is newborn jaundice. Breastfeeding is the very best diet for a newborn baby and every breastfeeding that happens has benefits for both the baby and the mother. Jaundice is yellow skin and yellow eyes and is caused by bilirubin. Bilirubin is formed when red blood cells break down and babies have a different kind of blood when they are in the uterus. As they get rid of that blood and form new blood, they build up a lot of bilirubin. Bilirubin needs to pass through the liver so the baby can get rid of it. Babies all have immature livers and sometimes they have trouble getting rid of bilirubin. If the bilirubin level goes too high, it can cause hearing problems and neurologic problems. The normal bilirubin level for an adult is less than one milligram per deciliter. If your bilirubin level went to two, you'd look like a school bus. Newborn babies typically have bilirubin levels in the 10 range and sometimes it can get very high. If the level gets too high, the treatment is ultraviolet light. The baby is put into a bassinet with a warmer and ultraviolet lights. A baby-sized mask goes on to protect the baby's eyes, and the light treatment decreases the bilirubin in the baby's skin. Depending on the bilirubin level, this can take anywhere from 6 to 24 hours or more. Once the mother's milk comes in, babies get a lot more volume, and in a few days they have CD yellow stools, and this is how they get rid of bilirubin. Babies will typically have those bright yellow stools for a couple of months before the stools turn brown and start to get odor to them. That is another story. 
Remember to call an elder. They've been waiting for your call. I'm Dr. Arnie Vineo, and this is Health Matters. Of the Navajo Nation, Defy is an MC, rapper, producer, and artist, well known across the Southwest. His diverse musical skills range from hip hop, spoken word, to contemporary acoustics. Based in New Mexico, his lyrics speak directly to indigenous life while smashing stereotypes and connecting his audience with his native culture. Defy is a longtime community advocate for native youth as a positive role model. Antonia Gonzalez of the Navajo Nation with videographer and editor Anthony Rodriguez introduces us to Defy and learn about all he's doing for Indian country. Peace to all my tribe people, dark skin fly eagle, five fingered being breathing, keep your minds peaceful. Couldn't afford the jewel in 1944 when the 4th of June Boarding school while in a boarding school, forced to move, got chores and more sports in a dorm, but only one course of food. Fire chief kept the wood burning before morning. Outside the outhouse early at 4.40. Passed the sheep rug on the floor by the door in the dormitory. Escaped through the corridors and explored with my war pony. Here to take it back home, cause y'all know the residues do. Scrub the resin off your face and scrape away the residue. Peep your resume like beams our people resonate with resolute, sacred and stoic, able to cope with all the pain that we soak in. The next generation's awoken, but before the reservation was a home, you know the nation was stolen. I'm in a sweat lodge seeing a vision. It's like I'm back out the womb, dreaming the grandmother moon in a fetal position. Christopher Mike Bitta, AKA Defy, representing the Diné Nation, feels most comfortable on stage. There are similarities between the culture of hip hop and my traditional culture. Somehow it felt very inviting and just being able to express myself on a beat rhythm, rhythmically through, uh, through lyrics and the drums I, somehow helped me like kind of reconnect to my roots. Since I wasn't raised prim primarily traditionally, um, hip hop was also like, and still is like the largest culture worldwide. And no matter where you go in the entire world, you'll find hip hop somewhere. And so that also allowed me to like realize like, oh wait, I could maybe reach a world platform maybe through hip hop. And uh, that's probably when I first started to write the raps and discovered like hip hop can be also an outlet for me to transcend, not only just like the negative feelings and vibes that I had within myself, but also even potentially help me like leave the reservation and travel the world basically through music and hip hop. God gifted travel as far as the bars risen the distance drifted beyond any star system. His lyrics speak directly to indigenous life while smashing stereotypes and connecting audiences to native culture. A longtime community advocate and artist educator, he raises awareness of indigenous issues and promotes sobriety. When I was growing up, a lot of my male role models were hip hop artists or a lot of the popular rappers at the time. And during that era, I feel like a lot of, um, of the lyrics and the content could have been a little bit over the edge uh, for certain audience members and people who identify themselves differently than others. So nowadays, I feel like including positive messages and like lyrical content that can be more accepted or even just heard without triggering feelings of self-doubt or any kind of negative vibe i feel like is needed right now my spirit's essence shines iridescent mother of pearl but y'all don't know the flow is floating like a ghost ship back then you know we had well, that's kind of all we had we didn't really have too many positive male role models like i said besides like my direct family probably just my uh, my che my grandfather on my maternal side was there for me. And my dad is now, but back then, you know, we didn't have such a, a very good relationship together. So growing up in a household that was uh, kind of filled with a lot of uh, some of the issues that we face as indigenous people on rural areas or in urban areas, it sparked a lot of uh, like emotions and during when I was growing up. So my escape was hip hop, basically listening to rap 
and getting out more. I met a lot of my best friends and a lot of dancers, artists, and people I felt like were like-minded, creative individuals, potential basically, but also just facing a lot of these adversities that we face out on the reservation, village area, or even here in the cities. Defy came into the hip hop scene in the early 2000s as part of an indigenous hip hop crew. He's since put his heart into solo work and other projects. His compassion shown throughout his new album, D-Resolution, nine tracks reaching larger platforms, working alongside other artists. The album itself is just D-R-Z-L-T-N. That's short for D-Resolution. I got inspired from living on the res. And for those of us and people who live on the reservation referred to as res life, I guess, that and also with the fictional like movie known as Tron Legacy. Basically there's a word in there called derez and it basically means like deprogramming and uh, or it happens when a program is shut down from their grid system. I basically just juxtapose that idea with the term res life and like what would the word derez mean for someone who's lived on the res their whole life but maybe never seen the movie Tron. So that's why the album cover has like a, an indigenized grid system with Defy walking out of the reservation system with the futuristic kind of metropolis in the back with Shiprock, New Mexico too. So it's just kind of like the juxtaposition of both of those ideas from the movie and then just from living on a res. And then the word de-resed or just the word resed, it just spoke, it stuck out to me. COVID-19 has hit Indian country hard, even impacting artists. But community support, virtual events, and collaborations with his band DDAT, a Diné jazz rap quartet, opportunities are flowing in. And he's grateful to share positivity during the pandemic. Follow the eagle and honor my people. Turn up like the throttle and EQ of conquering evil. Rot some pottery and offerings. Walk in my moccasins. Heads won't comment when you're doing good, but they'll mock your sins. They'll swallow your pride, forget the fame and glory. Respect those who came before me. Check your creation stories. But whether my scalp's braided or now faded, I'm a proud native. My styles are never outdated. My youth was a bunch, a bit different than most of the, uh, my contemporaries growing up here. I unfortunately lost my parents when I was, my father when I was 13 and my mother when I was 15. But when I was 13, when my father passed on, I was re removed and went into um, to Duluth, Proctor, Minnesota. And I did not come back to my reservation till I was uh, my senior year in 74. Then right after that, I went into service. First off, know who you are. You're Anishinaabe. You, the challenges I faced as the youth were different than what my parents faced when they were a youth. Challenges were different when that my parents faced, that my grandparents faced as a youth. So, uh, but the, the continuing theme that I learned over the years when I talked to my mom and dad before they passed on, my grandma and grandpa, and other elders in my community was seek knowledge. You seek knowledge many ways. You can continue your education. You can seek knowledge traditionally, culturally, and spiritually. Because what, the more you seek knowledge, the easier you are to overcome your challenges. CEO of Dead Pond Skateboards, Leander Breguet of Arizona, shares his journey from painting his first skateboard to mass producing them, and also how the pandemic has impacted business. He'd usually be traveling and touting the sickest Native American skateboards as they're branded, but instead, producer, videographer, and editor Stephen Tallis of the Navajo Nation shares how Leander is putting full force into marketing in order to keep making big jumps to success.
when I was <laughs> when I was younger, I used to skateboard a lot. Um, I, but back then they didn't have uh, skate parks, so I just mostly skated and like uh, you got, like up in Farmington area, you'd find these old irrigation canals and you'd clean them out, pull the weeds, and then it was rough, but you still skated it, you know, up and down. Yeah, my name is um, Leander Begay. Um, I'm from originally from Steamboat, Arizona, which is about maybe an hour and a half north of Holbrook, Arizona, off I-40. So that's where I originally grew up. I got into a car accident. It was a rollover, and I snapped my leg right here. So I got surgery done and got a metal pin. It's like two foot long in my leg. So that kind of quit my professional skateboarding dreams. So I quit and then I go back to it for a while, for years. And then until like six years ago, um, uh, I stopped drinking. I used to drink a lot and I've been sober for 12 years now. So in that time, you don't really have much to do, right? <laughs> So I was bored one day, it's like, oh, I used to skateboard when I was younger. I mean, since I'm an artist, put one and one together, I'll just make my own. So I painted my first skateboarder, did some prototypes, and people saw them and bought them right away. And then common sense only tells you, oh, I'm onto something, you know? Okay, so my, I can't even remember, probably back in like 2014, maybe, yeah, it was maybe 15, 2015, I was locked up in, uh, I was locked up in um, Flagstaff County Jail, and they have a bunch of newspapers that get sent in to that jail, and uh, he happened to be featured in one of those, one of those uh, newspapers, and uh, everybody in the pod knew that I skateboarded and that I do art, so... They showed it to me, and the me, like, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you guys have that, you know. So I uh, clipped it out, um, and I kept it with me for a long, long, long time. I actually, I still have it, that original one. It's mm -hmm. it's like six years old, yeah, and yeah. it's all folded up because in prison you can't you can't take anything from jail to prison. So. I hid it inside of my paperwork, you know what I mean, all of my legal paperwork, so that I could take it with me to prison. And when I when I finally got there, I actually um, I used bits and pieces of it and sort of like evolved it in my own style. And yeah, I mean to this day, I still you know reference your work, and it's, it's awesome, really. for fun uh, you know you, you try to make a living at it and you try to do it for fun and it's 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 kind of twilight zone is when when you get recognized and I'm not used to it I, I'm a real private person and and I, I'm not the best at being recognized you know I prefer to be on the down low, but it, you know, I, but it comes with it. I found out it comes with it. You know. I try to tell a story the way younger generations can. Uh, see it and understand it and try to fall in love with it. That's, uh, that's what I try to do. So I try to be different. 
and try not to be the same thing over and over. Try to hit multiple bases and just try to do something neat, you know, something good to the eye. For more information about Native Report, look for us on the web at nativereport.org, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you for spending this time with your friends and neighbors across Indian Country. I'm Rita Aspinwall. And I'm Ernie Stevens. Join us next time for Native Report. Thank you.